If you had to choose just one contemporary issue, what would that be that you want to see in the museums? Well, I suppose the biggest contemporary issue at the moment is, is migration, the movement of people around the world, particularly in Europe, particularly into Europe. It's a, it's a big topic of, of discussion in the UK. I know it's a big topic of discussion in Sweden and the other Scandinavian countries. And it's a, it's a good example of something which is terrifically complicated and terri terrifically difficult, which the public about which the public have very strong opinions, at least they think they do. We need more different types of skills in the museums, you said. Which skill are you longing for the most? Well, it's, it's an ability to communicate, really. It's, it's, it's to show that museums are, are contemporary and relevant and can mean something to issues that, that are um, on everybody's daily agenda, that they're not just a refuge from real life. You can find real life in museums, and that, that requires a lot of communicative skills. Are the museums bad? They used to be bad at doing this. I mean, the traditional museum didn't really communicate with anybody other than itself. And nowadays, my point is that museums are so much more is expected of us nowadays. So we do need a new range of skills and communication happens to be one of them. So are they brave enough? Uh, often not. Um, I think they're becoming braver. I think as museums are becoming staffed up by younger and younger people who are more aware of contemporary concerns, uh, that things are changing. But it's a, it's a bit of a slow process in some places. But I, I, I do have great optimism for the future. I think museums are, are changing and they are becoming more relevant and more communicative. Politicians like museums to be popular, so being popular is, is, is part of, you know, a museum that's got nobody visiting it isn't going to be popular with any politician of, of any description in the world. But that's a bad word in Sweden, you know, popular. Well, you see, that's because to be popular has often been portrayed as, as being brainless and it's, it's absolutely not true. You don't need to be brainless to be popular. I know there are examples of brainlessness which is popular. We've only got to look at some of the reality TV shows that we all consume, but it doesn't have to be like that. As long as it's emotional, it can be popular. And if it's emotional, you can look at some very serious issues, like, for example, child labour. There's, there's, there's nothing brainless about looking at the plight of, of, of children in Uzbekistan who are in, in the cotton fields rather than in school. That's something which would uh, is very emotive and very emotional for people, and it's something that they like to talk about. What's your best advice? I think it's to be, to be bold and brave and to, and to, to learn how to take risks and, and stop thinking that there's some kind of safe place to be because there isn't. You know, we're, we're, we're funded by the public and we're, we're public bodies and we're part of society and we're part of the way society works. And that means that we have difficult decisions to make sometimes. So and if you fail, it's okay? If you fail, it's certainly okay. Just have another go and have another go at, uh, at, at how you do it. That's, that, that's how we operate in Liverpool.